When last we looked in on the zombies, Joan Robinson had been snubbed by Middle Nuts faculty before delivering her lecture to an empty room and then getting the bums rush from the custodian. Now as they make their way across campus, Joan and Adam pause in a small garden near an open office door. Joan, says Adam, I'd like to learn more about that prophet iguana thing you mentioned. Not iguana, you fool, snaps Robinson, reminding him even as a zombie, she doesn't suffer fools lightly. Lacuna, prophet lacuna, it means void, like the one apparently between your ears. Smith wilts, but then comes back unruffled. I'm a quick study, he says, but please remember your econ is two centuries more current than mine. Yep, Joan concurs without ceding any ground as she continues. The profit lacuna is an empty spot in capitalism's doctrine. Nowhere does it say what the profit rate should be. Nowhere does it say what the extra reward should be to capitalists beyond the lesser rewards to pseudo-capitalists beyond those who willfully remove the plow horse from the field and such. Nowhere is it specified what the appropriate penalty should be for shifting out of productively held assets into rigging and gaming schemes. This feels strange, Smith observes, so how did the economics profession arrive at this interesting place with no practical way to determine if capital assets are used productively and no clear guidance about what the extra reward the capitalist should be. Well, we're coming to that, Robinson promises. For now, here's a short version. The way in which the world works has been changing, but capitalism's keepers of its sacred truths, people like you and me, failed in some ways with down the road unintended consequences following. Now, riggers and gamers sense these soft spots, sense how to exploit them. Does this seem arcane, Adam, she asks. Darn arcane, Smith acknowledges. What I see is this. Not only do pseudo-capitalists make a bundle, but they blow past unsophisticated elected officials who haven't a clue what scammers are getting away with or how to stop them from scamming. Eventually, legions of Americans become bled dry by rigging and gaming schemes. Bingo, says Robinson. So tell me about this guy you've been reading, Duff McDonald. Yes, says Smith, he's a celebrated business writer doing important work, I think, related in some ways to the iguana, excuse me, scratch that profit lacuna. I phoned and suggested we talk He's Canadian, you know, so I began with a salute to our queen. Unfortunately, he sensed immediately I'm a zombie. And the call ended abruptly. I don't understand why some people have trouble accepting zombies. Don't you think sometimes we are treated almost like we're uh, dead or whatever? Pity, Joan echoes. Duff does seem to understand the link between the profit lacuna and modern day scamming by riggers and gamers. Didn't Duff just release a book critical of MBAs? Sure did, Smith responds. And his analysis of Harvard's and other elite MBA programs fits hand in glove with your theory. So be more specific, Robinson implores. Sure, says Adam as he quotes Duff from his new tome. What's crystal clear today, McDonald writes, is society is sick with Donald Trump's victory simply the most visible symptom. If there is a silver lining in all of this ugliness, it is this. More than ever, it is time to get back to things that really matter. Wow, chortles Joan. He said that about our White House host who incidentally Graduated from an elite business school? He did, Adam continues. According to Duff, too many MBAs are cowardly, weak, and too greedy to oppose the fraudulent status quo. Even so, beyond failings of individual managers, 
the far larger issues are failings at the level of the firm and even larger still failings at the level of the economy. McDonald cites a litany of festering problems from misapplied free market theories to perverse CEO pay packages and on and on. Another name for these take the money and run schemes is short termism or short term thinking. And short-term thinking overrides longer-term stewardship. Over three decades, U.S. corporations have become obsessed with it. You know the drill, outsource jobs overseas, trash labor unions and government, make end runs around safety or environmental regs, and much, much more. All the while, the well-being of society, those issues end up in a dumpster. Among these, says Duff, are sustainability, climate change, entrenched poverty, and on and on. Bravo, bravo, exudes a cheering voice belonging to Middlenet's vivacious president. Pardon for intruding, she apologizes, but I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. Next, the Prez unleashes her own tirade, dissing on aspects of MBA education. Then, however, she pauses to study Joan and Adam carefully. Why, she says, I had no idea as I was eavesdropping that you two are, well, actually, you know, dead. But perhaps that doesn't matter much in reality. How would you like to be redesign consultants for Middle Nuts MBA program? Actually, you know, you kind of look the parts already. Just then, however, Smith takes an urgent call from Donald Trump's outrageous communications director known as the Mooch. The zombies must return immediately to the White House, he says. Until they do, he cautions Smith, do not become a leaker. What will happen next in the stomach-churning saga? Will the zombies walk away from a lucrative consulting job at Middle Nut? Will they leak news of their forthcoming White House meeting to the liberal media? Or is one of the zombies about to be nominated to be chairperson of the Federal Reserve? For now, only the Donald knows. Stay tuned.